What is going on, Wash Fam? Welcome to episode number one of the RPW podcast. If you're a new service business owner, feel free to hang out because 99% of these tips and tricks will still apply to you. Just a heads up, this is a no-wise necessary podcast, so listen to it at the gym, at work, in your vehicle, or wherever you consume your content. But most importantly, just listen to it because I want to go over some marketing strategies that ultimately assist in making my business do a quarter million a year with one guy and one rig. With that said, let's hop straight into to this episode, we're gonna break this down into three segments. One is free marketing strategies, two is budget-friendly marketing strategies, and three is ways to represent yourself. So we're making sure that segment one and two are actually being maximized. All right, so we're gonna go over some free marketing strategies. Um, I'm not gonna cover everything, so if I miss them, feel free to add them in the comments if you think they are very important. I'm just going over the main specific ones that have helped me in my journey and that just really stood out. So number one, before anything, you wanna be known for what you do. A huge YouTuber that I watch who is actually a YouTube growth coach, his name is Sean Cannell with Think Media. He says that he is known as that YouTube guy. I've noticed over the years in my pressure washing business, I've become that pressure washing guy. This is great because it associates you with your brand. So Starbucks is coffee. You want Jimmy's pressure washing and Jimmy, you wanna be known for that pressure washing guy. So every chance you get, just talk about your business. Let let new people know, let your friends know this is what you do. That way it starts to grow in their head that this is what you do. And if anyone talks to them about it, if they need the services, they're gonna start thinking of you now. I'm sure you guys saw this one coming, but next is social media. And I wanna talk about some strategies to actually utilize social media rather than just posting before and after photos to your page. So don't just post something on Facebook and in the title of the in the post say, hey, can you uh, share this please? This is my new business. Can you go share this? People read so many posts like that on a day-to-day basis. And in all reality, they're probably not gonna share it. You're gonna have a few family members that don't even live in the area. You're gonna have your mom and dad, maybe your brother, your sister, your spouse, whoever may be, um, very few people. So a really good tactic is to make a nice post, get a video out, get a video post on there, be on the job with you and a camera. It can be your phone. Um, hey, we're doing a roof wash today. This is the process, how we do it. This is why it's better than the next guys. This is how we're taking care of your property and we would love to service you. So this is going to get a future client to build that relationship with you right away. Before and after photos are great and they're necessary for a website, for your social media, but video is way more powerful. People are gonna see you and what you're doing on someone else's property and how you're kind of carrying yourself. And if they like it, they're gonna start growing that relationship. But with that video, you're going to copy the link, whether it was on Facebook or Instagram, and you're actually gonna send it to people. So send it to friends and family. Say, hey, it would be a huge, huge favor to me and my new business. If you can actually just share this, just copy the link and post it on your social media. I'd truly appreciate it. Um, it, It will go a long way for me. But when you're asking someone to do something personally rather than to a whole public audience on your social media pages, it's going to feel more personal to them and they'll feel more enticed to actually share it. And I do want to point out, um, just make a separate page for your business. Make it so if if you're Jimmy's pressure washing, then, you know, make that Jimmy's pressure washing Facebook page, make that Jimmy's pressure washing Instagram, TikTok, if you want to go that route, just make everything separate. I would highly recommend YouTube. Make that separate channel for your business. Okay, next up is Google Business Profile. So your MGB, My Google Business, that is huge. And I think it's free. If it's not free, it's very cheap. It was free when I did it long ago, but we're going to dive a little deeper into websites and MGB down later in this podcast. But for now, get that set up. You can link a Facebook as your website to the My Google Business, but eventually down the road, you're probably going to want to start ranking your website in SEO. You're going to want to do some paid ads and a nice website and a solid MGB setup is going to be critical in these following steps. But in the meantime, just get some photos on there, 
get a bio, get your business profile set up so it's there. If you're not ranking it and it doesn't have a lot of activity on it, it's probably not going to be on the first page. Well, it definitely won't be on the first page, but it is 100% necessary to have, especially if someone sees you from someone else and then they want to verify you in a sense and make sure you're on Google. That's very popular these days. Um, at least you will be up there when they specifically Google your business name. Okay, next up is Facebook groups. So if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, um, there's local groups for your city, for your area, for your specific neighborhood. There is Facebook groups for everything. So make sure you are going on these groups and just offering your services. People will get annoyed. Don't be intimidated by that. This is a posting in these groups is a repetitive long term play. So I see people, I mean, I talk to people and they're like, oh, you know, I posted in this group, I posted in that group, and I got no leads from it. And it's don't go in for a lot of marketing things with the mindset of, let me try this out and I bet I'll get some jobs. No, it, it's a long term play that. Again, people are going to see your post, whether it's annoying them or not. They're going to see your posts. They're going to see your photos, your videos over and over and over. And then finally, they're going to be like, you know what? I need this service done. I'm going to contact that dude. They're going to remember your name because you because they've seen it so many times on this Facebook group. And they're going to remember who to contact. And then certain people will just not really know you. But from your credibility of you representing yourself, if someone asks them, they're going to be like, oh, check this dude out. You know, I've seen him explaining paver sealing, roof washing, house washing. I've seen him explaining it all so well. And it looks like he does amazing work to give him a chance. So with these groups, it's a long term play. It's not, you know, post three times and land 10 jobs. Don't think of it like that. It's a after all, it is a free marketing strategy. It's just pretty much brand awareness at this point rather than immediate leads. So we're going to jump into um, free work for content and free work for exposure. We're going to jump into that realm. A lot of people disagree, but from a lot of credible people um, in a lot of different industries, I've heard them do this and they recommend it and I recommend it as well. So something very beneficial when doing free work is not, well, let me put it this way. Don't just say, Hey, just started a business. Want to do free work? Hit me up. You know, don't do that. You're, you're making yourself look small. You're making yourself look new, which you are, but you always want to represent yourself like a professional right from the get go. So with that said, make sure you're utilizing that free work, even if it's not for cash or money, uh, make sure you're utilizing that free work. So something I did a long time ago and something you can consider is like a raffle. So, hey, if you can give me your name and email, um, I'm going to be entering 20 spots and I'm going to pick one person for a free driveway wash and one person for a free house wash. This turns the tables. So now they're kind of in this mindset, not of, oh, look at this guy doing free work, but it's like, hey, I have a chance to enter for a free job or I have a chance to enter for a free service. Um, this way you're collecting 20 emails. That's 20 potential leads down the road. You're collecting phone numbers, information. It's very critical stuff. And it's just utilizing that free work more than just content and a before and after photo. And to you newer guys, newer to business, newer to pressure washing, the email list is so important because like I said, that's 20 potential leads. Um, say you add on window cleaning down the road, you can email 20 people now with those contacts say, hey, Jimmy's pressure washing just added window cleaning. We would love to service you. Our first time customers in this month are getting 10% off their first services. Jump on the deal while it lasts. Something along those lines, but that's why this is so important. And before we jump out of the free work sub segment, I want to stress one thing. So one free job is not one piece of content. I made this mistake over and over. I would do one job and I'm waiting on my before and my after. And, you know, I'll do a six hour day and that's all I got from it. And there's so much more content to be made for your business in one job. So I know you guys hear me repeating content. It is in this day and age so important for a small brand and business. So while you're on that job, just as you're setting up, 
Hey, this is Jimmy with Jimmy's Pressure Washing. We're out here on location today and we're gonna clean this roof. And before we get up there, I wanna show you something that we do a little different. We put bags on the gutters and this ensures that all the runoff is getting caught, not going into your garden beds or your sod. Um, this is just the safe method that little Jimmy does to protect your home. And that's one piece of content and you haven't stepped foot on the roof yet. And then you get up on the roof. Content number two. Hey, before we spray your roof, little Jimmy's pressure washing, we're no roof inspectors, but if you have any cracker chips, we're going to document that for you so we can show you afterwards. Two pieces of content. And the list goes on. So that's why I'm stressing that one job is 10 pieces of content, not one piece of content. Next up is door to door. So I'm sure everyone's heard of door to door, even if you're not in business. We see it all over social media. There's a little, there's a few techniques that I did when I did door to door that is not so harsh. I'm one of those guys, you might be right there with me, you may not be, but I know a lot of you will resonate. I don't want to park my vehicle on a random neighborhood and go knock random doors. It's just not my style. But what I will do is service a home and then across the street, I will say, hey, Kathy just had her roof washed. Um, you know, little Jimmy's pressure washing just did that. I'm Jimmy. I'd love to give you an estimate if you're interested. This way, there's a piece of work for them to look at. There's some credibility behind the job rather than some stranger just showing up to their door and trying to hard sell them. There's nothing wrong with that. It's obviously a proven tactic with plenty of businesses, but I'm just sharing some examples that may be useful for you if you're not going to be one of those guys like me. Okay, two more on the free marketing and second to last is local networking. So um, you can find local networking groups on Facebook. You can find them at City Hall. You can find them in a few different spots, but this is a great way to, again, get that exposure out there. It may not lead to immediate jobs, but think of free marketing as brand awareness. Think of, think of it as you instilling Jimmy's pressure washing into people's heads rather than immediate leads. So local networking is just going to, you know, there may be some more seasoned veterans in there with 10 years, five years of business under their belt that really like you. And then they meet you and then they start spreading the word about your business when someone brings up pressure washing. And then last up on this list that I had was giveaway service. We kind of already went over that. So we'll, we'll bypass that, but I'll just stress again, make sure when you're doing free work that you're utilizing and squeezing every benefit out of it that you can rather than just saying, hey, I want to do free work for my portfolio and a before and after photo. Get There's there's more to grab, so grab everything you possibly can when doing this free work. Okay, moving on to segment two of three is budget-friendly marketing strategies. Um, so with a budget, so with a small budget, more work is going to be required on your end rather than paying everything off with a big budget and saying, hey, I'm outsourcing this to you. You please take care of it. So that's what I'm getting at here with a small budget to work with. You're going to be you're going to be doing a little more of the work. But if you're hungry, this shouldn't stop you at all. So one of the big things I did and I still do from time to time is door hangers. Um, you can make up a nice door hanger. You can get a bunch for under a hundred bucks, around a hundred bucks, and you can do one job. And again, go around and put those door hangers, make them specifically for, hey, we just serviced your neighbor. Add some type of credibility. You can put a free quote section on the back and you can look at their roof from the ground. You can get their square foot off satellite. You can see the house. It's probably very similar to the one you just did. And you can have a price written up for them right there. And hey, if you're interested, text or call me at this number. Door hangers are very powerful. I've landed when I started out with this business and didn't pay for a marketing team um, for someone to run my ads. I didn't pay for SEO. I was out there boots on the ground hustling. And this was a great way and it did generate me leads. I've had this happen multiple times. One door hanger can be saved for over a year or two and people will hit you up. So it's like, don't count them out when you don't get leads within the next couple of weeks. They, they creep up and they continue to call. 
Um, it may not be instant, but this is a very effective way to land some jobs with a low budget. Next on the list is website. So if we were ranking this from most important, if we were ranking this from most important to least important, website would be up there. That is just your resume. That's your credibility. That's how people are going to see what you're about and what you do and what you offer. And then again, down the road, when you're ranking your website, this is, this is your hub. This is what they're going to be looking at. So make sure I made the mistake of building a cheap website. And I'm not saying this is a bad option or not to do this, but if you can save up a little money, have a professional design your website, get some good content for it, um, get some professional photos for it, and just make it look really nice because you don't want, as a new business owner, you don't want that to reflect on your website. And if you go as cheap as possible and you try to whip this website together, it's going to reflect. And clients, and especially high-end clients, are going to realize and start to see that you know, you're a small-time person. They may not call you at all. They may try to take advantage of your pricing. You want to look as professional as you can with your website. Next up is brochures. So this is another thing I did. Like I said, everything I'm preaching is something I did and I found um, benefits in these systems. So brochures, I did this a lot for paper sealing. I whipped up something with some before and afters, the material we use, and this just gives them a visual. I eventually switched to an iPad, but this just gives them visuals of what to expect. They see that you got some nice before and afters. They see the, the reputable brand material that you're using. And it just looks much better than going to do a pitch and say, yeah, yeah, it'll look like this. Oh yeah, this is the material we use. When the customer visually sees something, it, it'll perform much better. Just trust me. Next up is business cards. So again, this is right up there with the importance of website. Um, people are going to ask you for these all the time. They're going to see you doing work. Hey, do you have a business card? Hey, do you have a business card? Hey, Jimmy, do you have a business card? Yeah, here you go. So make it clean, make it eligible, list some services if you want, put your logo on there. Most importantly, put your logo on there. Put your contact information nice and big and eligible. I see people do these stupid, silly fonts, and it's just like, wh what does that even say? But main things, big logo, big number, maybe a few services and social medias. That's the, the most important stuff that you can, a way for them to contact you and see what you do. And that's the most important. Yard signs are super beneficial. Um, this is another thing just like door hangers. It may not be an immediate lead. They may take a picture just to save in their archives and have it for down the road. It may get taken out the next day. Um, it, it's just it's just another one of those things that it may one month produce a lot of jobs and the next month it may produce nothing. But again, it's going to put that brand awareness out there. And some people don't even like, especially in my area because there's so many and they just get taken down so fast don't even put their logo on there. They just put house washing, roof washing, this number. That's not a bad option just because sometimes you're not even allowed or technically supposed to be putting yard signs in certain spots. So you can be a bandit or you can just do it the legal route and put it on your customer's property. Something you can do is, hey, um, I'll do this service discounted next time or i will do this free service for you next time if i can leave this here for a couple weeks at the end of your driveway something like that totally legal don't have to worry about it getting taken down or you can go the route like i said be a bandit throw them everywhere hopefully someone sees them before they get taken down hopefully they don't get taken down i'm not saying which one to pick that's for you to decide but both options have been done by plenty of people and small businesses and then last up in segment two of budget-friendly marketing strategies is local advertising. So whether this is on a local Facebook group with tons of following, whether this is in a magazine, stuff like this is, in my opinion, very hit or miss. It can be, it can depend on the demographic of your area. If people are reading a lot of these magazines they get in the mail, if they're looking on these groups online a lot, um, it's just something that you have to, along with all of these, it's something that you have to test and see which one is doing the best. So 
say you try door hangers, paid Facebook group ads, um, local marketing, try them all. And then which one is working the best at that time? Double down. And then maybe when you get some more money, try something else, add something else in there, maybe throw a little money into your own Facebook ads. That's next on the list. We'll get there in one second, but try them all and just see which one works best for you in your area. Because what works for me in my area with ads, with which platform to pay for ads on, door hangers, it, it all depends. So see what works best for you, but you do have to try these options out. And then last on the list with budget-friendly marketing strategy is ads that are self-generated. So this is without hiring a company to run them for you. This is you doing your own research and hoping that they perform. And it will be hit or miss because with my experience, running ads is a very, again, testing process that you need to find your cup of tea and then from there double down on it but if you can find your system that turns one dollar into two dollars then you're on to something i know a newer company in the area it's three brothers they're great they're great people and they did the research on youtube on the internet they did a bunch of research how to run their own facebook ads and they're actually performing he's not hiring any company he's not hiring someone to run them for him He's just doing his own research and running his ads from there. And he's told me that, yeah, some hit and some don't. So that's just the risk of not really having a company that knows exactly what they're doing. But with a low budget, it's something worth trying for sure. And segment number three, we're going to call the separation factor. So like I said, we want to make sure that all these efforts that you're putting in from segment one and two are actually being utilized and maximized. You can do all these things, but if you're not doing a few things, then none of them will matter. So, so most importantly, when you're getting your first few paid jobs, you're doing your first few free jobs for your friends and family for that content, make sure you are doing a wonderful job and make sure you know what you're doing before you do it. If you're doing rushed work or crap work or really don't know the correct methods to clean something, there is absolutely no reason for someone to hire you again or consider paying you for your services if it is not done just as good or more ideally better than the last guy they used. So unlike me, I did not do that. I didn't know about soft washing. I thought you literally cleaned everything with a pressure washer. As you may know or you may not know, there's different techniques and methods to cleaning different surfaces. There's soft washing, there's non-organic stain removal, there's so many different things that are required to make a property look beautiful than just high pressure. So on top of that, of doing great work, you need to look the part. You need to look very professional. I highly consider you get, it can be cheap starting out. I started out with the cheapest shirts with you know, like iron on logos, but it just makes you look professional. You want to be clean cut. You don't want to be wearing Crocs and socks out on the job. I see big, huge businesses let their employees go on roofs with Crocs. And it's just like to a high end client, whether they say it or not at the job, that just looks so ridiculous. And it doesn't even have to be a high end client to a lot of people that just looks ridiculous. You know, make sure you have some, some deck boots on, look the part, and look as professional as possible so people are considering you down the road. On top of looking the part, you actually want to play the part as a new business owner and a new professional. So this is something that I didn't do in the beginning and I played myself very small. Um, I didn't see myself as a business owner or a professional yet. So in that, I got downplayed on my pricing I struggled with pricing. I had people trying to take advantage because they can sniff it out. A lot of these people are looking for a great price and they will pay. They have the money to pay, but depending on how you represent yourself is whether or not they're going to say, okay, I want his services and I'm going to pay for it, or I bet I can get a good deal off that guy. So this is why it's very important from the very beginning to carry yourself as a true professional because that is what you're aiming to be. So start carrying yourself like one. I'm guilty of it, but in the process of me playing myself small, you know, I got taken advantage of with pricing. Oh, can you just do it for that? It's just this. You're just doing this. You'll be, you'll only be here for this. And I would say, yeah, you know what? Sure, 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 sure. Just so I can get these jobs, 
just so I can have more work, just so I can get the rig rolling. Um, I would, you know, I would come, come down on pricing and I would play myself at the end of the day. I was just playing myself and that's, that's it. But you get the gist of segment three. You just need to make sure that all these efforts that you're putting in from segment one and two are being absolutely utilized. You don't want to be putting in all this effort and then just with a few things that you don't do correctly or don't carry yourself in the correct way, it can throw it all out of whack. So you need to be a professional from top to bottom in your work as a business owner, as an owner operator, you need to be 100% on the ball. Um, or things can go south quickly. But that's going to wrap up episode one, you guys. I truly appreciate you being here. If you're not following me on Instagram, here it is down here. Give me a follow. Ask your questions on there. I get back to my guys on Instagram. It's hard to get back to you guys in the YouTube comments. I have different content on Instagram you guys will love. So yeah, check me out over there. Future episodes, we are going to have some guests, some really cool guests on the episode, and you'll love to hear what they have to say. But anyways, Much love, YouTube. As always, I will see you in the next one.